Get this and get it straight. Crime is a sucker's road. And those who travel it wind up in the gut of the prison of the grave. There's no other end. But they never learn. From the pen of Raymond Chandler, outstanding author of crime fiction, comes his most famous character in The Adventures of Philip Marlowe. Now, with Gerald Moore starred as Philip Marlowe, we bring you tonight's transcribed story, Nether Netherland. There are times when life makes no sense at all, when confusion is the keynote and all we do is run in ever-tightening circles. The one and one is two school is closed and nothing comes out even. In the 30 hours just passed, I'd wrapped up a case and considerable of my youthful zest along with it. I was bone tired. When I reached my apartment, sank deep into my bed. It wasn't so much to sleep, but to die a little. And I was not long dead. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Oh, where are those slippers? Okay! Who needs more than 15 minutes sleep? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Marlowe, I've got to see you. It's very important. Yeah, it better be. It's awfully late, I know. You're nice to let me in. Did I let you in? Uh, yes. Just now. You're not still asleep, are you? Uh, no. No, I don't, I don't think so. You see, I always sleep lying down. It's a habit. You must know I wouldn't bother you this way if it weren't that... Well, someone's following me, Mr. Marlowe. Oh, He's been following me for I don't know how long. I'm so frightened. Oh, come on, come on. How about a cup of coffee, huh? Oh, really, Mr. Mallow, I don't think you're listening to me. I can make it worth your while. I wish you'd wake up. Yeah, well, that's what coffee's for. Come on, come on. You can talk to me while I make it, hmm? Now, you were saying someone's following you. A man. Naturally. Who is it? Why, I don't know. Uh-huh. Well, sit down over there at the kitchen table. This won't take long. Thank you. Now, why would anybody be following you? <laughs> That's the silliest question I've asked in days. But it isn't silly. I've tried to figure it out myself. I haven't done anything. I don't have anything. Yes. Well, we'll let that go. Look, maybe I ought to know your name, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Carolyn Shepard. Don't be sorry. I'm glad you're Carolyn Shepard. Why? Well, because it beats the heck out of being George Shepard. <laughs> Dee Dee said she thought you'd help me. That's why I came. Dee Dee? My roommate, Dee Dee Reynolds. Oh. She doesn't know you or anything. She just said if she were troubled, like I am, she'd get in touch with you. Yeah, well, that's nice of Dee Dee. Does she know somebody's been following you? No, no, I haven't told anyone. Oh. I, uh, I don't know her very well. We haven't lived together long. I don't know. I, I didn't want to frighten her, too. Mm -hmm. So I just told her something that sounded all right. And, uh... She said she'd heard about you. Uh, oh, your water's boiling. Hmm? Oh, 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 thanks. Does he ever call you? No, we, we don't have a phone. Oh. The landlady lives right next to us, the next apartment. We use hers. But uh, he never tries to call me, as far as I know. Well, does he ever uh, come to your door or approach you in any way? Sometimes he gets very close. That is, almost before I know it, there he is. But then I run, and... He's never caught up with me yet. Well, he could just be watching you then, huh? Yes, I guess so. But why? I don't know. Maybe we can find out. Did you see him tonight? Yes. He was out in front of the apartment house for a while. I, uh, I don't think he followed me over here, but he may have. Can you see the street from those windows? Mm-hmm. See anything? No, nothing. Oh, Mr. Mallow... What will I do? Well, right now, honey, you'll have a cup of coffee. I'll take a quick shower and a shave, and then we'll... He might come. Oh, the doors are locked. If you hear anything, just bang on the bathroom door. You won't be long. No. Sure not. Be back before you know it. It was now 2.30 in the morning. And although I was still gray and half dead inside, my eyes found a new reason for being wide open. Carolyn Shepard was not just an attractive girl. 
she was slightly sensational. Statuesque would be the term. She was almost shoulder height with ash, blonde, long hair. Her smoky blue eyes were half wild with fear and searching. But there were promises in them. And her figure was the kind that you didn't mention in polite society. How's the coffee coming, Carolyn? Carolyn? Hey, where'd you go? Oh, come on, the coffee couldn't be that bad. Carolyn! That's the craziest thing I ever heard of. The door was locked, all right. It's funny, she's gone. Carolyn! <laughs> uh, hello. Oh, hi, Simon. <laughs> you lose something, Mr. Adam? Something named Carolyn? Yeah, it looks like it. You didn't see her out in the hall by any chance. I don't believe I did, Miss Scott. I've noticed her. I'm not so sure. You all ran out on you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, well, are you dog. Oh, yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> yeah, where'd you go? Oh, there you What's out the window? Thought she might still be down on the street. Who? Carolyn. Oh, ran out on you. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> what did you do? Huh? You'll never believe that. Oh, come on. Now, tell me now. What did you do? I took a shower. You took a oh, shower? <laughs> oh, ran out on you. <laughs> Simon was listening badly but enjoying a good laugh when I left him. Back inside the apartment, I reached for a cigarette and a few conclusions. Her name was Carolyn Shepard. Someone was following her. She'd been here and she was gone. That's all I knew. I looked at the clock a quarter to three. I remember the coffee I'd made, started to the kitchen to get a cup when my foot and I caught something at the same time. It was a billfold. The driver's license said Carolyn Shepard, and it gave a yucca address, apartment three. Physical description didn't do her justice. But it heightened my memory, and I was there in no time. Yes, yes, what is it? I'm looking for Carolyn Shepard. Oh, you were? Well, she isn't here. I don't know her, but I'd like to meet that young woman sometime. It's a pleasure, believe me. Now, look, I'm sorry. We're always sorry. Between the freeway by day and the traffic at this door by night, on account of Carolyn Shepard, body can't get any rest or sleep. I'm really sorry. I know it's late, but late. You see... I can't imagine what kind of a person she is that men can knock on her door or any door they think is hers at all hours. I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going to move. And someday I'll meet this young Shepard person and I'll... I'll give her a good thrashing. You do that, but just tell me one thing. I'll tell you nothing. How long have you lived here? Six weeks. Six of the most miserable weeks of my life. Thanks. Very much. My goodness, what's going on out here? Uh, oh, I guess I have the wrong address. I didn't mean to wake everybody up. Why, you didn't wake me up. Just Mr. Norton, I guess. I, uh, well, I guess it's insomnia. I just practically never sleep nights. You ought to get together with Mr. Norton. He tells me he has the same kind of trouble. He isn't a very pleasant old gentleman, is he? No. Oh, my. I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Hester Hutchison. I'm the manager of the building. Oh, well, maybe you can help me then. I'm trying to locate Carolyn Shepard. This is the only address I've got for her. Oh, I'm sorry. You're sorry? Uh, Carolyn did live here, but she moved about six weeks ago. And for some reason or other, I never understood, really. She didn't want to leave any forwarding address. I see. Well, thanks, Miss Hutchison. Oh, not at all, not at all. I hope I didn't disturb you, really. Oh, my goodness, no. As I said, I, I'm sort of given to this insomnia or whatever it is. I, well, as a matter of fact, I just baked a coffee cake. Sounds silly, I know. <laughs> but I get some of my best ideas at night. And tonight it was coffee cake. Coffee cake, huh? If you'd uh, care for some, I'd be, uh, well, you'd... Just be more than welcome. Oh, that's nice, Miss Hutchinson. But you see, I get some of my best ideas at night, too, and I got one right now about going home to bed. I could sleep. I knew I could. I could have been sleeping at least an hour if Carolyn Shepard hadn't decided to come into my life and go out again. Well, I didn't know where else to look for her, so I decided to give my little trundle bed another whirl. I'd gotten about ten out of the usual forty winks. Uh, uh, oh, no. Yeah? Mr. Marlowe? Mm, I think so. I'm Dee Dee Reynolds, Mr. Marlowe. Well, that's swell, that's swell. I guess she isn't, but is Carolyn Shepard still there? No, no, she is... Uh, who'd you say this was? I'm her roommate, Dee Dee Reynolds. 
She hasn't come home, Mr. Marlowe. I'm so worried. I came next door to phone. Has she been gone long? Yes, yes, she has. Now, look, Dee Dee. Oh, I was, I... I was afraid of that. Oh, Mr. Marlowe, something's happened. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's happened? She... Well, I just know she's been killed. Easy, easy. Listen to me, will you? Poor Carol. Uh, Dee Dee. Carol. Listen, Dee Dee, where do you live? Dee Dee. Oh, fine. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Philip Marlowe. Now with our star, Gerald Moore, the second act of Philip Marlowe and tonight's story, Nether Netherland. I was wide awake again and furious. Because somewhere in Los Angeles, there was another telephone recently put on its cradle. And I didn't know where it was or how to make it ring. Somewhere in Los Angeles, too, were a couple of near-hysterical females, neither of whom had any regard for my sleeping habits. Dee Dee had jumped to a conclusion about Carolyn that I wasn't buying, probably because I didn't want to. Well, it was beginning to turn gray outside, and the jarring thump of the paper grazing my door told me a new dawn was with us. You still looking for that girl, Mr. Marlowe? Morning, Simon. You still bouncing off walls? I am confronted with something of a problem, Marlowe. So am I. Uh, someone in the night, mind you, has moved my apartment. No. Uh, yes, I've looked all over the neighborhood and it is gone. Yeah, well, you just hang on. It'll be back. No, oh, it has to be. It just has to come home to me. Oh, see, did you ever find her, Marlowe? <laughs> oh, her. No, I never did. Yeah, you were taking a shot. Yes. Oh, Marlo, you dog. Fine. You like coffee cake, Simon? Oh, my dear Marlo, I not only like it, I respect it. And I'd be proud to join you in some of it. I'd just be proud. No, 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 not me, Simon. About three blocks from here over on Yucca. Ask for Hester. I thank you, Marlo, from my heart of hearts. I thank you. Hail and farewell, Simon. Go. Well, let's see what's in the paper. Hmm. International situation. <laughs> you caught it. Inflation. Holy smoke. Police late last night found an unidentified woman beaten and unconscious in the Beachwood area near the Hollywood Hills. The young woman, tall and blonde, was taken immediately to the police receiving hospital in Hollywood, where her condition is reported as serious. <laughs> She fits the description of that shepherd girl's driver's license, all right, Mr. Marlowe. She's pretty banged up, though. Might be tough to identify her. Yeah, what time did they find her? Uh, about 3 o'clock this morning, I think. Mm -hmm. We were figuring robbery, since her wallet and most of the stuff in her purse is missing. Oh, oh, here we are. Oh. Yeah, she's still out. Pretty doped up, I guess, huh? Yeah. She the one? It... No. No, she isn't. You sure? Yeah, hair is too blonde. Well, maybe she's had a quick dye job since you saw her last, huh? Very funny. Well, we'd like to wrap this thing up, you know. If you could identify her, we'd be part of the woods. I'd like to help you out, but she's not Carolyn Shepard. How about it? Will she live? This one? This one. No, hasn't got a chance. You get that way, I guess, watching the inhuman parade of human stretcher cases into a police hospital? Eh, I wouldn't have his job. The sunlight was fresh and warm outside, and the coffee I got at the three-stool joint next door was neither. But now you're sleeping, now you're not routine, or the night before I hadn't exactly made me razor sharp. But by now I was alert enough to study Carolyn's wallet a little more intently. There was 12 bucks in it, and stashed in with the bills a book of check stubs on a Hollywood bank. Don't let anyone tell you that banks don't open till 10 o'clock. If you make like breaking down a glass door, they'll let you in. And if you cause them that much trouble, they'll give you the address you ask for and send you on your way in a hurry. I felt better about this address for Carolyn. Dee Dee Reynolds was listed on the card in the mailbox, too. Yes? 
You must be Dee Dee, and I must be Philip Marlowe. Oh, yes, Mr. Marlowe. Come in. Thanks. I, uh, I'm just supposing that Carolyn made it home all right. You seem to have a better grip on things than you did a few hours ago. Oh, I have. I don't usually go to pieces that way, but I was terrified. Uh-huh. Really terrified. She came home shortly after I called you. Sleeping now? No, no. As a matter of fact, she just stepped next door to use Mrs. Landsberg's phone. She'll be right back, I know. Uh, sit down, won't you? Oh, thanks. I will. <sighs> I had three chairs in my house. One for solitude, two for friendship. Three for society. Is that so? Which one am I sitting on now? Oh, you don't know the quote. It's Thoreau. Oh, well, I'm impressed. (laughs) I shouldn't flaunt my knowledge that way. It's just that I've been nervous lately. I always read Thoreau when I'm nervous. Well, aside from Thoreau, how much do you know about Carolyn? Not not very much. She doesn't let anyone know very much. I know she's worried. She watches at the window, and she jumps when there's a knock at the door. She acts like, like someone's after her all the time. I told her to see you. That's nice. Society is commonly too cheap. We meet at very short intervals, not having had time to acquire any new value for each other. You quote a good deal, don't you? Thoreau reaches me. How about Frank Laszlo? Frank Laszlo? Yeah. Hmm. No, no, I don't think so. Is he a well-known writer? I wouldn't know. I thought Carolyn might have mentioned him. No, not that I know of. Of course, we keep pretty much to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Which one of you smokes cigars? What? In the ashtray on that table there. Why, for heaven's sakes. I never even noticed it. That's odd. Of course, I was gone early last evening. Uh, Went to the library. Oh. Maybe someone was here to see Carolyn. Yeah, that could be. Hello, Mr. Marlowe. I'm so glad to see you. Are you? You don't know how glad. Uh, Dee Dee, would you... I promised Mrs. Landsberg I'd water the lawn, fore and aft, anyway. It's the nearest thing I can get to Thoreau's life in the woods. I love a broad margin to my life. The swiftest traveler is he that goes afoot. Mr. Marlowe, you do know Thoreau. (laughs) See you later, Dee Dee. Oh, it's been a pleasure, a real pleasure. She's an amazing girl, isn't she? So are you. You did a great disappearing act last night. I know. I felt so strange there. I knew he was around somewhere, and then I saw him down the street in front of your apartment. I had to run. I I went out the back, down the fire escape. But you didn't come home for quite a while. Well, there's an all-night diner over on Franklin. I stayed there a long time. I was so frightened. I still am. It's got to stop Mr. Marlowe. Whoever he is, he has to leave me alone. Who's Frank Laszlo, Carolyn? Why do you ask? Well, I looked through the check stubs in your wallet... You made weekly payments of $50 to Frank Laszlo for several months up until two weeks ago. Well, he's just a family friend, Mr. Marlowe. I, uh, he loaned me some money and I've been paying him back. Yeah, but 50 bucks a week is pretty much and pretty often. Well, I wanted to clear up the debt as soon as I could. Hmm. I thought you had no family. I haven't. But we've known Mr. Laszlo for years. You see, I inherited a small amount when my father died just last year. It was tied up for a while, and Mr. Laszlo just helped me over the breach, that's all. Does he live in town? No, no, he doesn't. If you're thinking he has anything to do with my... my trouble, Mr. Marlowe, you're very wrong. I wouldn't want him to know about it at all. Mm -hmm. You know, Carolyn, you never described this guy who's been following you. You know, I wouldn't even know what kind of a fellow to look for. Well, he's short for a man, not quite as tall as I am. And he's muscular looking. I think he's dark, too, although he usually wears a hat and a gray suit. Does he smoke cigars? I've never noticed that he does, no. You don't work anywhere, do you? How can I hold a job in the state I'm in? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I just look and wait. (gasps) What is it? I knew it. He's out there, Mr. Marlowe. Where? I just got in that car, the big convertible at the curb. Okay, honey, come on, let's go. must know we're following him, the way he's driving. Yeah, he can lose us with that job, too. Those babies can really take off. Look, he's moving over into the right lane. He's probably going to turn. Well, we're going with him. Hang on, honey. We can't lose him. We can't. We won't. He's pulling into that parking lot. Well, sir, we made quite a chase of it, didn't we? 
Yeah, we did. Get out of that car. I was just about to... You know, you really shouldn't uh, try to keep up with a car like mine. I was just toying with you that time. Now, if you want to make a real race of it... Now, wait a minute. How tall are you? Oh, I'm quite tall, really. Six feet seven, my stocking feet. How tall are you? It doesn't matter. Oh. Why, what's the matter, you lady? She'll be all right. She's just a little disappointed. Come on. No, no, no. You mustn't take it so seriously, young lady. Your companion here made a good race of it, considering he was up against great odds. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Mr. Uh... Oldfield. Pious Oldfield. Yeah, well, thanks. Oh, I don't know how I could have made such a mistake. But he did look like him, Mr. Marlowe. Until he stood up, I really thought... All right, honey, forget it. You're pretty tired and upset, and you're almost home now, huh? I don't want to be alone. He'll come. Don't worry, I'll stick around. Nobody will bother you. You must. You must. I'm so tired. So afraid. Take it easy, honey. We can't strike out all the time. Uh, hey, looks like Dee Dee's made a friend watering the yard. Oh, no. What? Mr. Mallow, this time I'm sure of it. It's him. I know it is. Cigar and all, huh? Okay, baby, we'll see. Come on. No, no, I can't. Come on, I Carolyn. Can't. you got to get with it, girl. No, I can't. I Dee Dee, can't. give me a hand, I will you? <laughs> Carolyn, what's wrong? She's pretty upset. Take her in the apartment, will you? Oh, sure, sure, I will. Who's the guy with the cigar? Well, he didn't say. He asked for Carolyn. Okay. Hey, hey, you. Hold it. I don't think so, buddy. I said hold it or I'll ram that cigar on your throat. You don't look so tough. That's how I fool him. You. Mr. Marlowe, are you hurt? No. Go back to Carolyn. Get her in the apartment. Well, she's in Mrs. Lansbury's. She's not making much sense either. Just Nothing's crying and mumbling sense. things. Oh, he's really out cold. Yeah, now look. Take a look in there. His auto registration. Read it to me. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Uh... Frank Laszlo, uh-huh. something something, Kling Street, uh, Barstow, California. I thought so. Did you? Never mind. Go back with Carolyn now and stay with her. If she says anything, memorize it like you do with Thoreau. But where are you taking Where him? I hope he belongs. I'll be right back. Hey, you keep dropping in like this and we'll be old friends, Mr. Morrow. Never mind that. What shape's he in? Uh, looks like a minor concussion. He'll be around in a little while. Who hit him? A very dear friend of mine. Look, keep him here, will you, and keep an eye on him. I'll be back maybe with another customer for you. Hey, we'll make you a rate. And you can save us both some time if you get one of the boys at the station to call Barstow. Find out anything they can about Frank Laszlo and a girl named Carolyn Shepard. You can reach me at the Landsberg phone number I looked up on Cherokee. Mr. Marlowe, gee, I'm glad you're back. How's Carolyn? Come in and listen to her. I'm scared to death. Yeah. I must remember. The mail that checked the bar stove. I must remember. That mail check. Got so much to forget, too. <laughs> forget and remember. It's been going on like that ever since you left. Yeah. What does it mean? I don't know for sure yet. Steve. Steve, you can't be everywhere. Everywhere I look. You can't be anywhere. You're dead, Steve. Don't you know you're dead? Take it easy, Carolyn. <laughs> easy, easy. Oh, that's Mrs. Lansberg's phone. I told her I'd answer it while she was out. Go ahead. It could be for me. Okay. <laughs> Carolyn. Carolyn, you're okay. Who are you? No! Steve! It can't be you, Steve. You're dead. I'm not Steve, Carolyn. Steve! Steve, you're dead. Don't you remember, Steve? I killed you. But you won't go away. You won't go away. It's for you, Mr. Marlowe. It's the police. Yeah, I know. I'll get it. Uh, she's... Oh. What's wrong with her, Mr. Marlowe? She fainted. She'll be okay. Thank you. Yeah. Should we leave Mrs. Lansbury's door open? Oh. Oh, sure. Uh, phone's right there in her living room. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Marlo, that Barstow call was a rule. Really? That dame you mentioned, Shepard, uh, she's wanted for murder. Who'd she kill? Her husband, Stephen Shepard, last March. Mm-hmm. What about Laszlo? Well, they're not sure out there. He was questioned at the time, but they couldn't get anything on him. The dame apparently just vanished until now. Mm-hmm. Last time they had uh, Laszlo in for questioning, a couple of weeks back, he 
that he didn't know where she was. Must have a real bad memory, huh? You bringing the dame in? Yeah. I'll bring her in. She all beat up too? I can send the wagon. No. I'll bring her. Just keep a straitjacket handy. Like I said, there are times when confusion is the keynote. Carolyn Shepard, poor sick kid, kept seeing the man she murdered. Saw him so often she believed it. And Frank Laszlo must have seen things too. Enough to keep Carolyn paying him blackmail ever since she killed her husband. Did you ever stop to think of all the so-called nice, clean, upstanding citizens who carry a moral cesspool behind shining eyes and a sweet smile? Suddenly they make headlines. Like Carolyn. What's the line? For murder, though it hath no tongue, will speak with most miraculous order. Adventures of Philip Marlowe, bringing you Raymond Chandler's most famous character, starring Gerald Moore, was produced and transcribed tonight by Cliff Howell and written for radio by Kathleen Height. Featured in the cast were Lorreen Tuttle, Verna Felton, Shirley Mitchell, Howard McNear, Ted Osborne, and Cy Kendall. The special music for Philip Marlowe is composed by Pierre Garagank and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Be sure to listen next week at the same time. This is Clarence Cassell's on the CBS Radio Network.